Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on some wood projects. I am once again partnering with Anna Luisa. Thank y'all so much for sending me three pieces. We're gonna open them up together and see what we have. I just got done decorating my living room for the holidays, so I figured this would be a great place to do this video. Now, if you are new here, my name is Brie. I'm the owner and artist of Upcycled by Brie, and I love to go thrifting, antiquing, garage selling. I take all those finds and I transform them into beautiful home decor. I will list my website right here, upcycledbybrie.com, and of course, it will all be down in the description box below as well. And you know, Christmas time, I thought what a perfect time to show my jewelry. It is gifting season. If you have somebody in your life who loves jewelry, I would highly recommend clicking my link down below and checking out all of the beautiful options they have. Now I will have a discount code and that will be automatically applied at checkout just by clicking through my link. So that will be the easiest option. I live by an airport. <laughs> All right, now that that plane has passed over, this first piece I got, the name of it is Genova Black. Um, it is a bracelet. I got two bracelets and a ring this time. When I am going out, I wear a lot of black. I did my nails just for this video, and I figured we would do the review first before I mess them up on these wood projects. But I wear a lot of black when I'm going out, so I thought these would be some great options. So Genova Black bracelet so feminine and just dainty i love the i love the black and the white and the gold combo you'll notice a theme here this piece is azra another bracelet and it always comes very well protected it has a little plastic piece on it still i'll show you all of these without the plastic and then I got one ring this time this is the mara onyx it's a one size fits all ring so it's adjustable Now, hold on just a second. I want to go get the pieces I had from before real quick. I went and grabbed my two rings uh, from the last video and they will go just perfectly with these. I'm so excited. All right, we're going to put them on. We'll try on together. Since this is adjustable, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it right in the middle. Yes, stunning. And then this is an adjustable one too, so I like to wear it as a midi. Because the bracelets are so dainty, I love the layered look on them. Oops, that one's flipped around. There we go. So pretty. I don't wear a lot of jewelry, but when I do, I really love to wear it on my hands. So then I've got my new ring here and my old rings, again, just stacked together. So pretty. What a statement. And can we just have a moment for the adorable little cases that the jewelry comes in? And this is how I store it. They have little magnetic snaps, and then I just set them up on my jewelry shelf like that. It's super convenient. Everything stays together. Okay, y'all, hold the phone because I was sitting here finishing up my signs, cleaning everything up right, and I got my little box out that all my jewelry came in. There were earrings in there too. So they actually ended up sending, I have paint all over my hands now, <laughs> but they actually ended up sending me four pieces. I got the two bracelets, the ring, and the earrings. These earrings are called the Lee Black. I remember I chose some little dangly earrings because I usually just wear a stud and I don't have any black earrings. Look how perfect those are together. So again, thank you to Anna Luisa Jewelry. I will link everything down in the description box below. It is the perfect time right now to go over and shop the site. I'm sure there's gonna be some amazing sales going on and the holiday season is coming up. Now let's take a look at how I made these amazing signs.
All right, and again, I had a, some dried out paint. This was aviary mixed down with some DIY white swan. It was really dry. I added a drop of water. I want just enough to mix up one rolling pin and then I'll use the rest of this on my other pieces of wood for my signs. I use a clay based paint called DIY paint. Now this paint had dried out. I watered it down a little bit and painted some rolling pins on one of my last videos but the paint that was still really dry and chunky, I took it with a spatula scraper and smeared it all over these broken down pieces of old drawer. I let the pieces of wood sit overnight to make sure that thick paint was nice and dry. And the next day I came back with prairie gray and faded burlap and it did about half and half painting the signs. While my paint was drying, I brought out my Cricut to make some custom vinyl stencils. Once the stencils were cut, I laid them out on each sign where I wanted them and took them to my desk. Now that I have all of my wording stencils cut out here on my vinyl from my Cricut, it's time to transfer them onto my signs. I grabbed this transfer tape off of Amazon. I will link it down in my Amazon shop below. Um, Sammy recommended it to me, so it's a little bit different than what I usually use but we're gonna try it out. If you don't have a Cricut, no worries. I pull out my stencils here in just a minute. Now I'm going through and weeding out all of my vinyl, taking out the sections that I want the paint, to, where I want the paint to be. So if I was gonna be using the vinyl for the words, I would be taking out the background, but since I'm using it for a stencil, I'm taking out the actual letters. Then I unroll this transfer tape and put it down on top of my vinyl stencil. Once it's laid on top, I use my Cricut tool to rub down, make sure everything is pressed down flat, and then that is going to transfer my vinyl stencil onto my transfer tape. Now I take my transfer tape and stencil and lay it on top of my piece of wood, grab my tool again, and rub, and now I'm transferring it off of the transfer tape onto the wood. Now I remove the transfer tape and I have got my stencil officially onto my wood piece. I go ahead and do that process for all of the signs that I'm using vinyl on. I'm gonna go in with my JRV stencil brush. This is the 3 8 inch and it is the smallest one. And I'm just gonna work with the paint that's on the lid here. Very, very little paint on my brush and I'm gonna offload most of that paint onto this paper towel. That leaves me with a very, very dry brush which is going to give me the crispest image possible. Crispest, is that a word? Y'all know what I mean. I like to go in with a swirling motion when I can. Very, very light hand here. I'm hardly, I'm not pressing down. And this is the quickest stenciling method I've found. Sometimes it's not quite possible and you've got to do more of a stippling motion. But this is a lot quicker. And the most satisfying part to remove the vinyl here and expose the lettering. Sometimes it all comes off in one swoop, sometimes not. If you don't have a Cricut, no worries, I've got you covered. I also carry a ton of the JRV stencils from her stencil line. They are amazing, it made to be used over and over. They're really thick, as you can see. I don't even wash mine every time, but if you don't have a Cricut, stencils are a great option. I will link them down below for you in the description box. But I like to combine my stencils with my Cricut uh, vinyl stencils as well, just to switch things up. So I'm gonna add a few more things to these signs now. So this one just says W.E. McGrew and Company. I'm gonna add Dayton, Ohio down here to the bottom.
here I have one of the stencils from the mini um, or apothecary label two. They're minis. I'm just going to do a tiny little bit of it right here between my big words. So again, don't be afraid to just mix and match up those stencils. And I just eyeball everything and freehand it because if you look at these old antique signage, signs and signage, it is not perfect. And we're just going to distress most of it back anyway. <laughs> Once everything had a chance to dry, I took it out front and yes, it is like 30 degrees. So I have my robe on and I am distressing everything. I've got my orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper. I just give a light distressing over the lettering and a little bit heavier distressing over my nice thick paint. All right, I brought the signs in. I wanted to give you a closer look. So where we had all of that good layered paint look. Now it looks like this sign had been painted for years and painted over and flaking off. They turned out just like I was hoping and now it's time to get them waxed and sealed. And sealed. So I'm gonna be using that same DIY clear wax. I'm gonna take a little out of my container here so I don't get my clear wax all colored. And I'm just using a Viva paper towel. It's easier when I'm working on a big area like this to get nice ease, even coverage in my opinion. We're just going to give this whole thing one even coat. For a little final touch on a few of these signs, I have taken some old hardware and I am just going to attach it to give them an extra antique feel. Now, I don't have enough pieces to go on everything, but a few of them will get embellished. Pretty sure this one is my favorite, y'all. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about my technique making this salvaged drawer look like it authentically old chippy sign. Did I nail it? or no. All of these signs are listed up on my website in the signs collection, which will be dropped down below in the description box for you, as well as the stencil, brush, and paint collection in case y'all want to make some of your own. What do you think about my made over signs? Next up, we have a thrift flip where I am taking a pair of candlesticks that I purchased, as well as these old wall sconces that I have had forever in my stash and we are going to combine them and add to them a bit. I'm going to start off by taking these apart. So I, this one was already pretty loose, so I'm just gonna sit here and wiggle it back and forth a little bit. I'm gonna start by painting these painting sticks with DIY beadboard, and that'll be a nice pop of white against this really pretty dark wood. Now that we've got a nice full coverage on these sticks, I'm gonna go ahead and get them waxed up. I've got my DIY clear wax, of course. Never used it before. It is an amazing wax. It is super buttery smooth. So the application process, as you can see right here, is very easy. I took all of my pieces out. I put a bead of wood glue on my sconce piece and attached the wooden piece on with my nail gun. Now the core bowls are all put together here. Cute, right? We've got the two-tone going on. We've got two coats of the beadboard also on the candlesticks, and now the tops will be wood. So we've got these beautiful candlesticks and core bowls that have the two-tone. We do need to go ahead and seal up the clay-based paint. I'll be using a DIY clear wax and a little bit of dark wax or black wax, probably dark to give it an antique Now, look. since I am reselling and I was already building a little bit, I went ahead and made these fence board corbels as well. These were the extra cuts from when I had made a uh, window shelf in my bathroom. And then I attached them to some old rulers. Now these rulers, again, weren't super old. Um, so I aged them up with some watered down, dark and decrepit. So now I've got a total of 
three sets. Got my DIY clear wax. I always take a little bit out and work off the lid. That way I don't get colored paint into my clear wax. These were already waxed. And then we will give the entire candlestick a coat of the clear wax as well. You can use a rag or a brush to apply the wax. Um, the DIY wax is really easy to apply. It's super buttery smooth. So it goes on really easy. I'm putting the clear wax on first to seal up this white paint and then also to act as a little bit of a barrier, um, a protector before I put on the dark wax. If I went straight on with dark wax over this um, white paint, it would absorb way too much and way too fast and probably look really gross and dirty. Now that everything has a coat of clear wax, I did take these with my orbital sander and it rounded out the corners a little bit just to, oops, shaking the camera, just to soften them a little bit, um, which exposed some of the raw wood, which I'm okay with. Now I'm gonna go in with some of my DIY dark wax. I've already got clear wax on everything. It's gonna give a little bit of a barrier, help me control this dark wax a little bit. And I'm gonna work in small sections. I'm also gonna be working with the brush I had the clear wax on to help me kind of blend it in and out around the corners and, and such. I wanna keep it pretty two-toned, so I'm not gonna to do too much dark wax, just enough to make these look old. Same thing here on the candlesticks. They've already got their coat of clear wax and now we're gonna go in with some dark wax. I'm gonna focus on the parts where, I hate to say crevices, <laughs> down in the creases, down in the low points, where the pieces meet each other. <laughs> I keep forgetting I have my Lazy Susan again. To finish them up, I am taking my tight bond ultimate wood glue and a hammer and nails and nailing on those dark wood rounds. And here is a look at the candlesticks and the corbels next to each other. From an ugly pair of thrifted candlesticks and outdated wall sconces to some beautiful modern farmhouse decor. Here's a reminder of what these looked like and how beautiful they became. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think of my makeover. If y'all loved today's video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you wouldn't mind, send it out to a friend. We are so close to 20,000 subscribers. That is my goal by January 1st, 2023. So help your girl out. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to all so you don't miss any new videos. Thank you again to Anna Luisa Jewelry, and I will see y'all next time. Bye, friends. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to... Okay. Now the corbels are all put together here.